It is time to start our first assignment. You can access assignments in one of two ways. So the most direct way is to just click on assignments from the home page of our Canvas course. And we just finished the first two exercises. Now we have assignment one, and this is worth three points. Uh, zero points if you don't turn anything in by the deadline. One point if you turn something in by the deadline. So your sketch, your process work, something that shows me that you know that there's a deadline and that you're working towards it. Two points if you meet all the requirements, but it doesn't really all come together yet in a way that engages the viewer fully as a portfolio piece. And then three points if it meets all the requirements and is fully engaging the viewer as art. You know, you've tried to finish it off. You've, you've made your, your really best effort at creating a finished work. What's nice about assignments is unless you get zero, unless you turn nothing in by the deadline, you can resubmit improvements any time during the semester because we're trying to get the best portfolio pieces possible by the end of the semester and you'll get the, the new highest grade. So if you click on where it says assignment one fantasy landscape, you will get a PDF Oh, you get you'll get examples of the past exam of the past work and then if you follow that through you will get a description of it and then where you post right and if you want to skip the past examples you can just go right to where you post it and then there are links for additional examples and then there are links for where you can get to the YouTube videos where I've demoed this both now and in past semesters. So to go there, just directly just go to the assignment on assignments page and say post here. And that's where you'll turn your work in. This will not have as detailed instructions step by step because these projects are a little bit more involved than the exercises. But the demonstration videos will give you those step-by-step -step instructions. And you're going to get more and more creative freedom as you go. So today to get started, we basically need to find some inspiration. And then we need to use that inspiration to create a sketch. And this sketch will look a lot like our finished project because it's going to be the blueprint for, for where we put things and how we put the, the image together but it's gonna be contingent on what kind of imagery we can find. And to find imagery to use to composite together for our fantasy landscape, I'm gonna recommend that we use Pixabay, but if we need to, we can use Google Images, but we want at least a thousand pixels. And what's great about Pixabay is they're going to be high quality images. They're not gonna have any watermarks. They're gonna be already Creative Commons open, so allowed for us to use. And they will usually be an average of around 3,000 pixels at their highest resolution. Whereas Google Images, if you say look for only large images, you'll see images that are 1,000 pixels and images that are 10,000 pixels. And you won't know which one is which until you've looked at them more closely. OK. So the other way you can access the assignment, especially if you don't get to be in class to ask questions about it to get it started. I, I always want you to just jump right in and not worry about making mistakes is you can go to the unit modules. And we just finished up unit three with our, our vector shape exercise. So now we're into unit four doing our first compositing assignment. And this will really take you through everything we're trying to learn and all the things we need to do in this module. One thing I want you to do to show your engagement in class is to answer this question of the day. And we'll be discussing this probably next class. But it's a pretty straightforward question of the day. What are the advantages and disadvantages of digital raster art? That means pixel-based art, because that's we're doing a raster-based compositing project over traditional art. 
And then in order to get full credit for it, you just need to answer with more than 100 words. So answering that, think of it as a journal, kind of shaping your thinking, gets you ready for a discussion that we'll have in class, hopefully next class, about it. And it'll get us excited about what comes next. You can always add to your question of the day responses by clicking on those three little dots and, and adding more. So your, your thinking on it can evolve as we're working on it, right? I would say without any experience doing digital art, people think that doing traditional digital art or traditional art is much more difficult than doing digital art for say landscape painting. But you, you're paying attention to the same aspects, really trying to control the same kind of details. So these past examples can be helpful because they show you your landscape doesn't need to be horizontal. You can do a vertical landscape. This is a past instructor demo. This is a past student example. And if you like, you can even sketch your, your idea out in two ways, both vertical and horizontal. But whatever you end up with, the challenge is then finding reference that can fit into those ideas. And this is a background plate that we'll later be adding figurative content to. We'll be adding a creature into it for assignment th for proving ground number one. We might want to animate it later. So for our background plate, we don't want to have any content that we would expect to be moving with any kind of speed, right? It's okay to have a setting sun because that happens fairly slowly. It's definitely okay to have plant life because we don't usually observe plants moving even though they do. But things like fire, things like uh, people or creatures, we want to leave out of this background plate. You don't want to have vehicles hovering midair, but you can have ruins of things. You can have ruins of like crashed vehicles, or you can have um, buildings with, without people in or around them, because we can always add those later. Okay. So my inspiration is often not from photos. This is just personal. When I'm trying to come up with a new concept and a, a new environment. And this is a, a public domain image from NASA, which is an artist rendition of the surface, I believe, of Mars. Or maybe actually of one, not of Mars, because there's atmosphere, um, of one of the moons of something, right? <laughs> Based on what his view is. But it can look very believable. And what's great about NASA photos is that they're public domain because they're paid for with federal tax money. Now, how does NASA put together a photo like this where there's even some liquid water possibly on this, on this moon? You can see another little body there next to the, the sun. Well, they're going to do exactly what we do for this project. They're going to composite from, from existing photos and try to match it to their scientific data, right? So public domain sources are the, the absolute best to use. Creative Commons open sources are the second best to use. And that's what Pixabay allows us to do. But how do you get inspired? So instead of thinking, I want to do something on a different planet, let's see what images there are of a different planet, you're not going to see that many images, right? You have to kind of invent it. So I like to look at animated backgrounds. And what's nice about animated backgrounds is they're very good at storytelling, which is often what concept art is trying to do. So they'll communicate something very clearly about their environment, and they do it with always including kind of three things, and that's foreground, middle ground, and background. And you can decide in your composition, in your sketch, if you want to focus more on the foreground, the thing that's closest to the viewer, like these do, where we have big rocks in the foreground, a little island in the middle ground, and then a horizon line and clouds in the background. Or here, big rocks and a cut tree, and then a middle ground mountain, and then the background sky. Big rock. Basically, the, the foreground is always a big rock. 
But what is that perfect for? Well, if you want to showcase kind of small creatures, it makes sense to have your background focus on the on the foreground, right? It gives you a lot of space if you have mice or if you have um, rats or why can I only think of rodents? <laughs> Lizards, you know, little creatures you want to feature. Opossums, there you go. So then there are middle ground focus landscapes, which will help feature more like human sized creatures, right? Or more multi group narratives. So we have one from Jack and the Beanstalk here. And you have the foreground just established by this big piece of grass. And then the beanstalk is in the middle ground and it makes it look huge. And you can imagine all that space between the foreground and middle ground where you can put figurative content. You can also have low horizons. Notice how you don't even see the horizon line in this composition. And it's still a landscape without seeing the ground. And they instead have the middle ground focused without having a horizon line. Or you can have a high horizon, right? So this is a kind of a medium horizon, a low horizon, and a high horizon, depending if you want to focus on the sky or on the ground. And then background focus landscapes kind of get right to the focus being on the furthest area back. So whatever you come up with, you want to think about it as having a, a distinguishable foreground, middle ground, and background. That's what we call three layers of depth in visual storytelling. It gives you the most options. So here's a good past student example. In the foreground, their sketch had a big complicated city, which is not the best element for a foreground, right? Because already the city is seen from so far away. So in finding reference, they decided instead to use this bridge as the foreground. It still shows that it's made for people, but it definitely gives you more depth and more activation than, than putting a city in the foreground. And then that gives you a lot more space in the middle ground where you have these waterfalls, which is a tricky element because it, it feels like it should be moving, but you can definitely use water if you want to, just try not to use water that's too dynamic looking because then it will bother us later when it's not moving. You have some, the city got tucked into the middle ground and then you have mountains in the, in the background and this created sky. So often your ambitions of your sketch will change a little bit with the reference you find. And that's, that's just fine. So here is an inspiration I found. I'm just kind of pushing the easy button a little bit instead of taking lots of inspirations and putting them together into a new sketch. I just found this one and said, okay, this is good enough to get started with because it's going to change a lot with what reference I find. But informed by this, I see the foreground, the middle ground, the background. I'm not going to do the running water. And I just created this quick sketch and I labeled the different things I know I need to find. So I, I need a tall tree trunk. I need a hillside. I need bushes, plants, and rocks. I need some foreground palms and grasses. I need a setting sun and maybe some some hills with trees for kind of the background. So what am I going to do? Now that I have that sketch, I'm going to go to Pixabay and I'm going to type in these search terms. And as I find things, so like high mountains, I'm going to get a lot of different options, sometimes many pages worth of options. And because it's Pixabay, they're all going to be high quality and plenty of resolution. So I right click on them and then I say open link and new tab. I want things that look somewhat alien. This is really cool because there's like a research center here. Sometimes the photos are really beautiful. I'll show you this as an example but maybe a little bit too artsy, you know, for our purpose. So this is a really high quality photo that goes at a really high resolution, but notice how much of it is out of focus. And we want everything in our composites to be in focus so that we can determine what goes in and out of focus <laughs> ourselves instead of being limited by what we find. 